As we prepare to celebrate our Mass this evening, we will begin in a moment with hymn number 241, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. The moment of our journey through Advent in the church's eyes reaches its sort of halfway point. Okay, there's only a week and a bit to go, but still, this third Sunday of Advent is that gentle pause in whatever we've decided to do, and we, in a moment, we will light the rose candle on our Advent wreath. The idea, as we uh, imitate the liturgy, we recognise the call from the Lord to rejoice always. As we come before the Lord, we bring our prayers and petitions to him. The concerns of our hearts, the needs of our world, the needs of those who have asked us to pray for them. And as we do so, we pray, especially in this Mass, for Susan Carey. Aware that others may be watching our recording, our remaining Sunday Masses, 
At 8.30, we'll be celebrated for the repose of the soul of Father Kevin St. Alban at the request of the Sisters of Mercy. And at half past 10, we will pray for all our parishioners. <coughs> Heavenly Father, you sent your Son into the world to be the light of all nations. As we light the third candle on our Advent wreath, as we light the rose candle, we ask that his light may shine in us, that we may continually, in all that we do and say, rejoice, and that we may share that rejoicing with others. We ask this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Recognising the invite to rejoice, we still recognise at times that we fail to do the Lord's will. We fail to live a life rejoicing in God's service. For the times that we have sinned, we ask for his mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and in sacrament to strengthen us and make us holy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord. I exult for joy in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in the cloak of integrity, like a bridegroom wearing his wreath, like a bride adorned in her jewels. For as the earth makes fresh things grow, as a garden makes seeds spring up, so will the Lord make both integrity and praise spring up in the sight of the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Saviour. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth, all ages will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. The Almighty works marvels for me, his holy his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. My soul rejoices in my God. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy. My soul rejoices in my God. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Be happy at all times. Pray constantly. And for all things, give thanks to God. Because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat the gift of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy and may you all be kept safe and blameless. Spirit, soul, and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you, and he will not fail you. The word of the Lord. and speed to God. Alleluia. 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 The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man came, sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. This is how John appeared as a witness. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He not only declared, but declared quite openly, I am not the Christ. Well then, they asked, are you Elijah? I am not, he said. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We must take back an answer to those who sent us. What have you to say about yourself? So John said, I am, as Isaiah prophesied, a voice that cries in the wilderness, make a straight path for the Lord. Now these men had been sent by the Pharisees, and they put this further question to him. Why are you baptizing if you are not the Christ? and not Elijah, and not the prophet. John replied, I baptise with water. But there stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me, and I am not fit to undo his sandal strap. This happened at Bethany, on the far side of the Jordan, where John was baptising. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, the Lord is near. The entrance antiphon for the Mass today 
from our parish mass books. We would have heard it, but we sing a song instead. But these words, this very first word, rejoice, gives that sense of the title for this particular Sunday in our Advent journey. You will see it at the top in the header of the newsletter, Gaudete Sunday. For those of you hovering in suspense, it means rejoice, sorry. So it is Rejoicing Sunday. It is uh, coming very clearly through our readings. This sense of rejoicing. I exult for joy in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul glorifies the Lord. Be happy at all times. Be rejoicing, shall we say. These are, as you will have known and heard already, extracts from today's readings. As I was thinking about these readings, my mind went back to one of the uh, older memorial acclamations that we used to say in Mass. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Doesn't seem to have much to do with rejoicing as you start, but that sense of rejoicing is there all through, in fact. The past, the present, the future. He was born and died. He is risen and is with us. He will return. And so we rejoice because he came to us. We rejoice because he remains with us. And we rejoice because he promised and will come again. Our gospel passages remind us, however, of the waiting. For those alert and attentive, you may have noticed the reference in relation to our responsorial psalm actually says Luke. It is the song of Mary when she goes and visits her kinswoman Elizabeth and the baby in Elizabeth's womb leaps for joy. The Magnificat a uh, reflection and making of her own words from the Old Testament. My soul glorifies the Lord. But it is, as we know, a song whilst waiting. It is some months before the birth of Christ. And so Mary is with child, but he is not yet born. Mary waits, as does Elizabeth. Elizabeth waits for the birth of the star of our gospel, the birth of John the Baptist. The gospel passages, therefore, remind us of the waiting of Advent. Again, the gospel passage for today begins almost with a sense of expectation, a man came sent by God. His name was John. Still got to hang in there for Jesus' arrival. Still got to wait for the beginning of that great teaching. However we wait, it isn't the same waiting as the people of the Old Testament. It isn't the same expectation that those who first heard John the Baptist crying out to them. But we wait in the way of a rejoicing people. A people which, as St. Paul tells us in our reading today, have the Spirit. A people who have God's gifts. And indeed, we know we are a people who have Jesus' teaching. In the news this week, buried amongst all the uh, ups and downs, there was a little bit that caught my attention. It told us and reminded us not to hold on if you're about to sneeze. 
because it's very dangerous. I don't know if anybody else saw it or whether it was tucked away. But that sense of not holding back. Let the sneeze out with your hand. Coughs and sneezes spread diseases. But in the same way that the news was telling us not to hold back because it was dangerous, St. Paul could say something similar. Don't hold back the Holy Spirit. Don't suppress, as he says, don't suppress the divine. The Holy Spirit comes to us to be shared. Like John was sharing his light, like Mary was sharing her message with Elizabeth, we are given the Spirit. We are anointed, as Isaiah talks about, but not simply for ourselves, but so that we can reach out. God asks us to continue to be imitators of John the Baptist, making a straight way for the Lord. God has called you, and he will not fail you. These words of St. Paul can echo in our lives because we are called, called through the gift of baptism, called as a people to do God's will. So as we prepare to set out once more on the last part of our Advent journey, as we prepare to leave this place and continue to share God's word, let us accept the blessing that St. Paul gave to those who heard his letter. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy. And may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit, soul and body, for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For that coming, whether it be soon or late, but certainly that coming at the end of time. So, let us truly be a Gaudete people, a people of rejoicing. Let us rejoice in the Lord always. The Lord is near. So let us, as a rejoicing people, stand and together rejoice as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and we came man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried.
The Lord is nearby. In a spirit of joy and rejoicing, we bring our needs to him. We pray for Pope Francis, for all bishops, priests, deacons and religious. May all the church use this time profitably in prayer and acts of penitence to prepare for the coming of the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, in our we pray for our world, for mercy and justice, for rich and poor alike, for freedom from tyranny and oppression, and for a time of peace and tranquility for all people. Lord, in your mercy, in our we pray for all expectant mothers as they await the birth of their child, that the Lord may grant them the confidence and strength to dispel any anxiety or fear they may have, and bless them with the faith of Mary. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for our family and friends, for those who have helped us in our lives, and those who help build up our parish community. May the joys of this holy season draw us all closer together. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for all those suffering from physical or emotional pain, and for all who are weighed down with worry, guilt, or despair, that in this season of hope, they may be restored and comforted. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those who have died, that eternal joy be theirs. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. In silence, we bring our petitions to God, our loving Father. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Mary, look forward to the joy to the coming of the Christ child. We ask her for her help with our prayers as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Almighty God, our loving Father, receive our prayers and bless us with the spirit of joyful trust in your power to bring hope and light to the darkest places around us and within us. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. So as we prepare our altar for the Eucharist and take up our collection, we um, place our prayers and petitions upon the altar. We pray, especially in this Mass, for Susan Carey. And as we do so, we sing our next hymn, hymn number 578, One Bread, One Body.
praying, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord has set the sacrifice on my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we pray the second Eucharistic prayer. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just ask you please to be seated once again. For all our regulars, yes, you guessed it, we have a rose or pink newsletter for uh, Gaudete Sunday. And as always, do ask you to take home, uh, read and inwardly digest, um, or download a copy. Um, the, you get an extra day this week, because you get Monday on there or for the week after, because for some reason the church says we've got, oh no, Christmas Day. So it'd be great to see everybody over that Christmas weekend, um, twice, 
there we are, you get to come to church twice because the church says it would be really good to celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent and then Christmas Day as well. So uh, I do ask you to read an inwardly jar jest. Um, a couple of things to point out. Uh, this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock at the, in the grounds outside St Joseph's Church will be the Chestfield Christmas Carols. Uh, all parishioners are very welcome to come along and join uh, the people in the community of Chestfield as they gather uh, for carols and a few readings and prayers uh, before retiring, so to speak, to the WI Hall for a bit of festive cheer. Uh, with Christmas on the horizon, we do uh, need to prepare, so you'll see things there about church cleaning, uh, church flowers, uh, Christmas offerings, and readers. So if you're um, a reader who's planning to come to the five o'clock or eight o'clock mass on Christmas Eve, if you could let me know, uh, which would be useful um, as we don't normally have a five o'clock or an eight o'clock over the weekend. Um, we're assuming that the 8.30 and 10.30 readers will put their own roads together for that as well. Uh, now, where'd that go? Somewhere on my stand. Oh dear. There it is. As you came in at the main doors of the church, so sorry if you've missed it, but at the main doors of the church, there are some little cards uh, with a little nativity scene hanging on a Christmas tree uh, entitled, He Misses You. He being God rather than Father Philip. And uh, it's an invitation card that you may wish to drop, take home or, and drop through a neighbour or a family member who uh, used to come to church but not so regular anymore. It says, we cannot wait to welcome you to church. Feel free to get in touch with me and you put your name. It's very important you put your name and not mine, otherwise people will say, why are you dropping cards through my letterbox? For service times, see the parish website or contact the parish and there's a little space there. And then on the back it says, why the Lord Jesus is calling us to Mass. So a sense of an opportunity, uh, particularly when a lot of people do um, feel the call, the pull, as it were, to come and worship the Lord uh, for Christmas. So an opportunity to do so, uh, to engage with that and encourage others to come home, as it were, for Christmas, as it's been called in the past. Um, on the newsletter, um, just a note to say that uh, the, we've been informed a couple of uh, people in the local area who died recently. Um, I do ask you to pray for the repose of the soul of Patrick, or also known as Patsy Gregory, from the centre of town, and for Jane Simmons. Um, I took a call from the funeral directors to organise the funeral for Jane, and uh, visited actually during the week um, just before he died, Patsy in his home, um, and I was able to anoint him and say prayers. So we pray for them on their final journey, but also for their family and friends, as I say here, that the Lord may grant them peace and consolation. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And may their souls, the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the newsletter, there is a, a couple of items that relate to the SVP. Um, and indeed, today, as you leave church, you'll have an opportunity, as was mentioned last week, to donate towards the SVP's Christmas uh, fund. The, this morning, um, a multitude of people were in the hall packing hamper boxes, or uh, shall we say, uh, they were recycled. They weren't the posh Fortnum and Masons box type ones, but uh, for delivery to families and people in the town in the, uh, who are in need. Um, it costs them a lot, and if you'd like to help them defray the cost of that, um, they have an opportunity as you leave church today. So I invite you please to stand once more. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. As we go, we will sing our final hymn, hymn number 689.